Welcome everyone to Brush of Magic, where we lovingly take favorite vacation memories and magically transform them into custom artwork. My name's Ron Stern, and in this video, we're continuing a digital painting called Friends and Winter Summerland. And this video is a time-lapse recording of the painting process and a series of videos. So please click on the subscribe button to watch along. I spent a considerable amount of time in the values stages of this painting. It was important to me to try and capture the emotion and likeness of each of the friends as best as I possibly could. And during this stage is when a lot of decisions are being made about the finer points of detail and uh, even the composition. Although there is a tremendous amount of background detail available to me uh, because of the location, I chose to keep those details uh, to a minimum. There are details of the golf check-in station and the two golf courses that are actually uh, visible in behind the friends, but I wanted to keep that down to a minimum to try and help the viewer's eye concentrate on the many friends who were already present in the foreground. The Walt Disney World Winter Summerland Miniature Golf Course also features Santa's Winter Bago. It's a fun play on words and an homage to the Winnebago's, uh, the RVs and trailers that go by the name Winnebago. Santa's Winter Bago is a converted travel trailer, which features the check-in station as well as the snack and the gift shop, which is a fun, fun way to look at it. And if you're visiting and you want a fun photo, you can sit in Santa's sleigh as the friends in this painting have done. And you can also uh, get together in front of the surfing Santa statue, which the Disney Imagineers say was made by Santa's elves as a tribute to jolly old Saint Nick. I knew I would be adding the large framing elements of the golf club, the golf ball, and snowflakes to the painting, and I had to think about the best ways to present them without overpowering the painting as a whole. That's why I chose to render them in a hue of blue using slight variations of blue tint for detail. I made the decision to make the side framing elements much larger because I felt it added a fun touch to the composition. And I felt this decision also helped the viewer join in on the fun of the time of year and the golf outing itself without detracting from the stars of the painting, which of course are the group of friends. And a pro tip, I use many different digital brushes when creating a painting, but I do most of the work with just a select few brushes. In most painting software, the user can adjust the opacity of their brushes as well as the layers, which means that the brush can be darker or lighter based on the opacity and allows uh, things underneath the brush stroke to show through. However, I almost never adjust the opacity of the brushes. I will only do that if I'm trying to achieve a really specific result. I find that using the pressure of the stroke is a much better way of achieving softness, thinness, smoothness, opacity, and transparency, etc. For new artists who may only be used to working in digital media, keeping the opacity at 100% may be a bit of a challenge. 
but I contend that it's well worth the struggle as you learn to master this skill of brushwork. And, and as an added benefit, if you ever work in traditional media, such as acrylic or charcoal or oils, your brush skills will be much closer to where you may want them to be. If you enjoy these videos, please click on the subscribe button, which helps the channel be found by more folks who may like them too. We are going to say goodbye for now, and we'll see one another in the next video for Brush of Magic.